This video is not rated G. Hey, Midwest Parker here. This video is not rated G. Yeah, that's right. Uh, normally this video is very vanilla, very safe for the whole family, grandma, down to the little kids, but I have to give you a fair warning, this one is not rated G. So welcome to the channel, my name is Dave. I am a full-time RN, full-time husband, father, part-time YouTube content creator, part-time reseller, mostly on eBay, but I do sell a little bit local pickup like on Craigslist. I'm trying to dabble in the Facebook marketplace, I haven't dove in yet because people drive me crazy, and from what I've heard, People are a little nuts on Facebook Marketplace. So, this video is what sold. So most of these videos on this channel are to help out people that are new to reselling, no matter what platform, eBay, Macari, Poshmark, Etsy, garage sale, whatever you wanna do. I have how-to videos linked down below in the description, how to ship, how to list, how to source, how to research. So if you're new, please check those out. And this video is what's sold on eBay, so that helps people that are new to reselling so you don't buy the wrong things and waste your time and especially waste your money sourcing things that just don't sell. I'm very transparent. I will tell you uh, what I bought, where I got it, what I paid for it, and what it sold for. And then you can kind of do the math in your head to figure out the net profit. I also have expenses, you know, you've got gas and you've got shipping supplies, that's not figured in. but general ballpark net profit uh, gives you a general idea and I also tell you how it shipped so we're gonna get into what sold but before I get into what sold I want to tell you the previous video I asked you guys your opinions on the 48 star flag that I have should I sell it or should I keep it I do have it hanging on the wall here in the eBay office behind me overwhelmingly the votes were to keep it so I think for now I'm just gonna keep it um, unless somebody gives me a great offer. I did pay $24 for it. So if you're really interested in it and you want to offer me a decent price, contact me, midwestpicker.com, through Instagram, or my email is down below. We can work out a, a deal and I can shoot you a PayPal invoice. I'm not really sure what I would want for it. It's worth at least 50 bucks, so we'll see. So the first item that sold was this 1979 vintage one-sheet movie poster called Going in Style. Starring Lee Strasberg, I think that's how you say his name, George Burns, and Art Carney. I sourced this poster from Mr. Buys Lot. It was a wholesale lot I got from him. Um, I don't know if he still has any left, but I bought a whole ton from him. So my cost of goods is about four bucks. I took a best offer of $18 plus first class shipping on top. You're going to hear me say that a lot in this video. Almost everything I sold recently and that I sell in general is first class. I love shipping small lightweight items first class and I almost always charge the buyer shipping. Next item is a weird one and you probably have passed these things up before going to garage sales, yard sales, flea markets. This is a Pro Football Hall of Fame ashtray. Can't really tell in the picture but this thing is really small. It's like three inches in diameter. Um, I think I sourced it for about two bucks and I don't even remember where I got it. Typically I'll tell you where I source these items. I don't know, maybe this was a thrift store? I can't remember, my memory is just foggy on this one. Uh, but ashtrays do sell. If you can get them cheap for free or a buck, two bucks is, a is starting to get a little too high. I wouldn't pay like five dollars for a vintage ashtray. It just turns into a gamble at that point. But this one has two things going for it. It's got the Pro Football Hall of Fame, so anybody that collects items of any kind, pin bag buttons or t-shirts or pennants or anything to do with the Pro Football Hall of Fame would like this, and then anybody that collects vintage ashtrays. So you're killing two birds with one stone with this one. This sold for $24.95 plus first class shipping on top. I was shocked. I thought for sure I listed it way too high. I did look at comps, but man, there's like none of them out there some different kinds of ashtrays but I couldn't really find any that looked just like this one so I priced it high and I waited I was patient it took about a month and it sold next one is a 1984 Corvette lapel pin this was manufactured by uh, myself and my dad it's a long story but my father used to own a lapel pin manufacturing business back in the 80s 
and because I was his kid, I got to take home, you know, buckets full of lapel pins. So this is part of my personal collection. I still have hundreds of them that I'm never going to sell, but I have some like tractor pull tractors and Corvettes and other cool things. I just throw a price of 35 bucks and put it on there. And when I first did that with the tractor pull pins, people went bananas and they sold like crazy. I probably sold them too cheap. I could have asked 50 bucks a piece. But these are really high quality lapel pins. They're hand cast in lead. They're gold plated. They're painted in enamel. All handmade, very high quality. More like jewelry, like a brooch, more than just a lapel pin stamped out of a machine in China. Um, so they're really, really well made, but they're brand new. They're in little baggies from the 1980s. I put them in a box. I slid them under my bed as a teenager. So they technically have never been sold. So I sell them as vintage new old stock and people love them and you can't get these anywhere. These are one of a kind pins that you will never find anywhere. I know because I made them. Now we did sell 50 here and 100 there and 20 there. So they exist somewhere out there. But this is a good lesson. If you go to, like I said, a flea market, an estate sale, a garage sale, and you see a little box full of lapel pins pin back buttons go through there real quick and look through them if you see lapel pins that look vintage and you can turn them over and sometimes they'll have information on the back people love to collect vintage lapel pins now new lapel pins manufactured now in the year 2020 yeah people do buy those but the older the pin the higher the value this one i had listed for 35 dollars like all my other ones and this guy messaged me and he wouldn't leave me alone and <laughs> he went back and forth back and forth started out at ten dollars i'm like dude i'm not even gonna respond to that but anyways we agreed on a price of 25 bucks plus first class shipping on top next one is another horse racing program and in a previous video i'll put the episode up here if i can remember this is a beulah park horse racing program from the 1950s i source these from what the hails they have a sunday night auction every sunday night at 9 p.m it goes from like 9 to 11. uh recently um his girlfriend George had surgery so they haven't had auctions not last Sunday and I don't think this coming Sunday so there's like a pause but eventually they'll have auctions and they auction uh, bulk lots of items all kinds of stuff anything from yarn to Lionel trains to uh, pencils office supplies baseball cards stamps uh, this time it was horse racing programs I knew nothing about them it's a long story but watch this older video uh, a couple weeks ago explains the whole thing basically I bought 33 horse racing programs for a hundred bucks so cost of goods is like three dollars um, some of them sold for crazy money my best one was hundred and seventy eight dollars for one program some of them sold for 30 40 50 dollars most of them sell for about 10 12 15 bucks this one sold for twelve dollars plus first class shipping on top Next one is kind of weird, and I have a video on this too. Maybe I'll put the episode there. Selling junk just laying around your house. You can sell things and make good money of stuff just laying around your house. This is an example. I found a box under my bed. It's just crap I've had from the 1990s, I guess. Um, you know, I have a, over here off camera, I have a GoBox lunchbox. Just stuff that I kept. Old Coke bottles. And this was a terracotta. I don't know if it's... I put... Uh, Aztec, Mayan, and Inca, I think, in the title. I can't even remember. But anyways, this is a gift shop touristy item from the 1970s that people would buy either in Mexico or, or in the Southwest. And it is terracotta, and it is kind of cool. It's a known company that made it. It's got a stamp and some information like impressed into the terracotta. I guess it's collectible. I had no idea it was. I just thought it was cool. That's why I kept it. But if you're keeping something that you really don't care about, but it's cool, it's weird, it's unusual, it's different, look it up on eBay. You'd be shocked that people actually collect that stuff and they pay a lot of money for it. So I listed it for $35. Right away I got a bunch of views and this item had more watches than any item in my eBay store. I have over 330 items in my eBay store. Um, I don't know, maybe a dozen of them have watchers. This thing had 19 watchers. Now most of my stuff with watchers, maybe two, three, five at the most watchers. And those are usually other resellers that just wanna see what the item sells for or they're just curious. Um, every once in a while a watcher turns into a buyer, but for me the percentage is very low. 
Uh, 19 watchers on this thing and hundreds of views within a couple weeks. I was totally shocked. Now, I don't know if they thought it was genuine artifact from 2,000 years ago. I doubt it, but um, a lot of attention. So I listed it for, like I said, $35. I finally got an offer for $31 plus first class shipping on top, and I took the offer and it sold. This next one I call a gamble, and this is fun to do if you can afford it. I don't recommend you do this very often. This can cost you a lot of money, but I'm not bragging. I know what I'm doing. So I bought this at a local auction, curbside pickup. This is a Griswold cast iron frying pan. It's six inch, but I know Griswold. The pictures looked like it was in excellent condition. When you participate in an online auction, all you have are pictures. You can't do the smell test. You can't do the touch test, you can't pick it up, you can't examine it for damage. You're pretty much taking the gamble, and, th and that's the way it works with online auctions, whether it's eBay or your local auction house. But I took a gamble. I won this for $16, which is not bad. It's worth about 25 to 30 bucks. So I did overpay because I got the auction fever. I got it home, checked it out. It's in really good condition. Um, with things like this, people are very particular when they collect cast iron, especially Griswold or, or uh, what's that French word, Crusoe, I don't even, I can't even say it, but there's another one that's a French name, I'll put it up here later, um, yeah, they want to know everything, does it, does it sit flat when it's on a flat surface, does it have this, does it have that, um, you have to be very careful, so if you're going to list anything like this, look up other ones on eBay, somebody with a lot of feedback, like 5,000 feedback, and look at their description and everything they say. I mentioned this too with action figures. Before you sell action figures, if you've never done it before, look at other ones. Look at expensive ones, somebody with a lot of feedback. You would be shocked on all the details they have to have in that description. Cast iron, I know very little, but I did learn by looking at other eBayers, all the uh, dimensions, the top diameter, the bottom diameter, um, all of the manufacturer's marks, is there any rust, does it lay flat, all that kind of stuff. So I took a chance, I put it on as auction because hot items like collectible cast iron like this or coins or anything else that's going to get a lot of attention, like Star Wars items, Lego items, anything like that, um, take a chance with an auction. They're kind of fun. Some of those horse racing brochures that were worth a lot of money, I put a lot of them as an auction and then the rest is buy it nows. So this one I put up as an auction for 99 cents starting price. <laughs> I know you're thinking, Dave, that is crazy. What if you only got one bid? True, but I knew I was going to get more than one bid because this is a very popular item. Got a lot of attention right away. It got a bid right away. And then it's a seven day auction. So by day six, the bids just started pouring in. The highest bid was uh, 25 bucks. So the winner got it for $25 plus priority mail shipping on top. Now the last one is the reason this video is no longer rated G. Just this episode, not every episode going forward. And I know a lot of people watch this video. If you're watching this video on the big flat screen in your living room or your eBay shed and you got all the little kids in the room, you might want to have them leave the room. <laughs> you might want to pause the video and say, hey guys, you know, go see what mom's doing. Um, so this part is the part of the video that's not rated G. I guess you would say this part is PG. I don't know. So the lapel pins that we sold back in the 80s, some of them were novelty ones. I have one now in my eBay store that's little police officer that's a pig in a police officer uniform. It's just for fun. It's no big deal. But there's Republican and Democrat ones. And then there's these weird exclamation ones. I'll put them up here. I'm not going to say it out loud. Um, but for some reason, people like that. So this one in particular, this I'll call it the BS pin, and I'll put a picture up here. I had these up in my eBay store with variations because there's four colors. There's red and white, um, black and blue available, and I, I didn't know how to price them, so I put them at $9.95 a piece plus first class shipping on top, and then I combine shipping, so if you buy more, the shipping is free. I just throw them all in a box. Well... They didn't really sell too well. I think Dumpster Diver Dad bought a couple. Um, got a lot of views, but not a lot of sales. So I played around with the prices. Um, then, I would say a month ago, I played around with the title. And I added the word protest in the title. Because it kind of goes along with the theme of the pin. 
So I did that, and within, uh, I don't want to brag too much, I'd say within two weeks, maybe three weeks, a psychiatrist in Chicago found these pins on my eBay store, and he bought 11 of them at $9.95 a piece. So these sold for $109. I was shocked. My cost of goods, zero. They're sitting in a box from the 1980s when I was in high school. I saw them one day. I had like 50 of these stupid pins. <laughs> I thought, what am I going to do with them? Well, I put them on eBay, of course, and they kind of sat there. And then I thought, well, with the current event that's going on right now, with the protesting, the demonstrating, I'll put protest in the title. And I think that helped. And I'm going to, as I'm blabbing, I'm going to put pictures up here and, and show you. Um, I think it did help. Why a psychiatrist? I don't know. I think he might be giving these away as like an award for maybe his students or something. I don't know if he's a professor or not. I don't know what it's for. Maybe he's uh, maybe he's organizing a protest in Chicago and, and they're going to wear these. I don't know. Who knows? But money is money. So they sold and they're gone. So the part of the video that's not rated G is over. You can bring the kids back into the room. Grandma can come back into the room. So that's the video, guys. That's what sold on eBay. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, please put them down in the comment section. Um, you can email me your questions. You can follow me on Instagram. You can message me there. And that does bring up kind of a topic. Um, to me, these pins, the BS pins, um, are not controversial. But would you sell something like that on eBay? Would you sell something that you don't agree with? Would you, as far as politics, religion, um, figures of speech or cursing, if you had a t-shirt that had bad language on it, would you sell that? Um, or would you not sell that? So put that down in the comment section. Um, and put down in the comments too, why do you think a psychiatrist from Chicago bought 11 of those pins? What do you think he's going to do with those? I really don't know. I'm kind of stumped. And I'm keeping the 48 star flag for now. Um, so that's the video, guys. If you know anybody that would find this video helpful, if you know anybody that's getting into reselling, there is a share button down there. You can click that and you can share this video through text messages or Facebook Messenger, however you want to do it, and share this video with anybody else you know that's new to reselling. So that's it, guys. See you next time.